Imagine doing this, then doing this with your best fountain pen. The JML Classic Fountain Pen won't leak or blot because of its virtually indestructible iridium nib, writing smoothly and effortlessly. In the JML Classic Pen set, you'll get the fountain pen, plus a roller pen, ball pen, two-color pen, micro pen, and mechanical pencil, as well as this fantastic 66-piece refill set. A wonderful gift this Christmas for an incredible $9.99 at Woolworths, Boots, in-store, and Wilkinson's right now. Christmases have come at once. <laughs> but luckily, we've only got the good bits. Back to back on UK TV. Mike Robinson's African Cuisine Safari continues now on UK TV Food as he prepares beef fillet carpaccio style and is treated to roast lamb by the local Maasai. Some small carrots are big carrots cut down. Chantonnets are naturally small and naturally sweeter. A tip from Albert Bartlett, provider of fine vegetables and sponsor of the Flavour Zone. We've come up to the foothills of Mount Kenya to a family-run ranch and lodge at Barana, where I make a carpaccio from a fillet of their own beef, the Maasai show me the way they cook lamb, and I show them a spicy salsa dish to serve it with. I'm staying with the Dyer family at their lodge, and they thought that the best way to show me round some of their 35,000 acre ranch was an early morning ride, dogs and all. I couldn't agree more. This is without doubt the sweetest time of day and the only way to enjoy this magnificent land in as natural a way as possible. Now what we're doing is we're just trying to have a look for some game, especially giraffe, because on these, we can go up right up to the giraffe within sort of meters, which you can't do on foot or in a car. Because, you know, you're on a four-legged four steed, they sort of think you're one of them. Barana has been in the Dyer family since the 1920s and was originally run as a working ranch. It's only in recent years that the family has developed the lodge into a safari business, complete with all the luxuries that their visitors need in this heat, like the shaded terraces and the spring water pool. Well, this has just got to be the most scenic place I've ever cooked in. Unbelievable. I'm here with Bimmy <laughs> Dyer. She's Fuzz Dyer's wife. Now, you and Fuzz run the Marana That's together. right. And what we're cooking today is using everything that you produce here on the ranch. Absolutely. Now, this is your local beef. Our Grown own here. steers. Your own yes. steers. It's gorgeous. We've got a fillet of beef here. It's absolutely beautiful. Really, really tender. Has it been hung for a while? It's been hung for um, six or seven days, which is a bit less than what you do in England. But I they're think, a bit smaller anyway. A bit smaller, huh? yeah. Perfect. Now, we thought what we'd do with this is just do a little carpaccio of beef, which will serve on a bed of leaves, which they grow in the organic garden here. For this, we've trimmed up this beef fillet. What we've got is some cracked pepper. Yes. Which we're just going to push some thyme into, some dried thyme and some dried oregano, a huge pile of it. And that's going to go onto the board here in a nice big pile. In a nice wodge. In a nice wodge, all the way along like that. 
that's fantastic. The wind doesn't take it. it's going to blow it all the way, but never mind, we're going to do it anyway. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this, which is lovely sun-dried tomatoes, and I'm going to pinch some of the oil from the sun-dried tomatoes. This just makes the pepper stick really well. So that's going over. Pour a little bit on. There we go. Lovely. That will hopefully make it stick. And now on it goes. You really roll it. Like that. Over. Like that. Over. The beautiful thing about this dish is that is all the preparation you have to do. Except all we have to do is just wrap that in a bit of foil because that'll stop the, uh, between now and cooking, it'll allow everything to stay in all the flavors of the pepper will go into the meat and it'll stop the pepper falling off. So I'm just gonna tear a little bit of foil off this roll. And then we can lift that pepper. up. Okay. And that's going straight on there. Pop that in the fridge. Yeah, we'll pop that in the fridge for probably yeah. half an hour or something. Yeah. So and let it set. It'll sort of set a bit. The meat will set, go nice and firm. Yeah. And then that's going straight on a griddle and it's going to cook for a minute or two on each side. So it's cooked like that much all around. Let it cool again. Slice it onto a bed of organic leaves, maybe some parmesan or Ooh, yes. anything. You know, Ooh, olive delicious. oil. It'll be stunning. Yum. Great way to go. While I was chilling, the head chef is preparing a guinea fowl casserole. Philip begins by marinating the guinea fowl breasts with cubes of fresh pawpaw, herbs and olive oil which tenderizes the meat. After a few hours, Philip then pan fries the breasts lightly in a little butter, then sets them to one side. Next, he sautés a mixture of bacon, carrots, onions and celery. He combines this mixture with the marinated pan-fried guinea fowl breasts, adds a little chicken stock, then transfers it to a low oven for one hour. Philip serves the guinea fowl breasts with fried spinach and roast potatoes. Now, not only has Bimby got some of the best produce I think I've ever seen here, all grown organically, done fantastic, but this has got to be the world's best barbecue pit. Oh, yes. Huge barbecue. Yep. You've got these fantastic uprights, which will take a spit roaster, so you could cook like a whole lamb or something. Whole pig. Whole, whole pig. Whole lamb. I mean, God, hell in heaven. Fantastic. We've got our own little grotto here. Now, we're going to start off by cooking the carpaccio. We've got our beautifully, here, yeah, look at this beautifully marinated piece of beef and it's dry marinated that's the pepper you know the herbs thyme oregano all that that's what we put in that's, and all we're going to do is whack this on these hot coals now quickly i really want to explain this coals should look like this they should be glowing underneath and the ash should be white if your ash is not white don't cook on it always wait that's perfect that's any flames perfect at heat. all yeah it's wrecked isn't no, it no it burns you're gonna too burn much. it you get those nasty little sausages covered in two inches of charcoal. <laughs> I'm going to bang, bang this on. Oh, it's very, very hot. Just whack like that. Look at the heat of that. Now that is going to cook on each side because this is a small fillet of beef. This is going to cook each side for about less than about a minute, no more. I want it to cook to about three millimeters deep. Yeah, you know? perfect. And then it's raw inside. And then when we carve it, mm. you've got that beautiful raw, Pink. marbled, lovely mm. beef. And then on the outside, you've got crispy, chilli, peppery, yummy sort of beef on the outside. Just going to simmer away there. Oh, do you it's cook very, on this a lot? It's very hot, that, isn't it? No, we do. It's, it's a brilliant thing. We cook lamb out here and, our, and the, our own beef. I'd love to cook a whole, whole lamb or something on oh, here. It's, I think it's that would be. brilliant. Now, OK, that's one side done, as far as I'm concerned. Over she goes. Ah, always have a pair of long-handled forks or a long-handled tongue, because you really don't want that can't put my hand on there for more than about yeah. 10 seconds or it burns. <laughs> so look, you can actually see that the pepper has changed colour there. And if I tap that, you can see the resilience. So that's perfectly cooked. That's cooked to about that depth. So what I want to do, and this entails great risk to life and limb, mm. is pull this Careful now, Mike. Onto, its, it. onto its side, give it a little pat to hopefully make it stay there, just like that. Because it's no good with this, it's visual. When we, we're going to serve this, I think, what, on a bed of your leaves. Oh, yes. You know, of oh, those lettuce leaves. Yeah, lolo rosso, you know, maybe some of the celery tops and some Ooh. herbs and, oh, you know, we'll make it up later. But just make sure that it's cooked all the way around. Because if it's not cooked all the way around, when we carve it, you're going to get lovely red beef, nice brown patch, pale bit. Mm. Doesn't work. Yes, no, it's, that'll be 
And also, because it's peppered, even. Yeah. you can often, and I've seen this all over the place, easy to forget which sides you've cooked. Because, you know, it's covered in pepper, you can't tell. So, what I suggest is you just roll it in one direction. You start it at the top of the grill here, you cook it for like 30 seconds, pull it towards you on the side, cook it for another 30 seconds, pull it towards you again, another 30 seconds, and then the fourth time pull it towards you, and you guarantee that it's going to be cooked all the way around. Otherwise, you just forget. Okay, now that side hasn't been done, so I'm going to go over. Towards you. There we go. Yeah. And look, I can tell that's done, because you can yeah. hear it. You can just see. It's looking good now. It's coming taut, it's isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Doing this. Yeah. Now, the other thing about carpaccio is, as Bimbi just said, very rightly, and this, you've got to know this, is that when you cook meat on a very hot heat, and there's probably four, four, four or five hundred degrees of heat coming off this, yeah. it seizes. If I stuck my hand, I'm not going to, straight onto there and left it, it would go and contract. And that's the, that's the instinct. That's what happens when you put meat in a hot heat. It's like roasting, same deal. You have to let meat rest. So what we're going to do with this is let that cook for another 30 seconds, yep. take it off, and then it's going to go in its foil, and then it's going to go in the fridge for maybe an hour. And that chills it right down. If you want to serve it quickly, I suggest you put it in the freezer for like 20 minutes. Yeah. Chill it down. The meat will relax. And then when we come to carve it, also if it's cold, it's much easier to slice thinly. And I want wafer thin slices. Bed of leaves, parmesan, olive oil, some herbs. Mm. Ooh. Sounds good. And I'm also the, the moisture comes back out, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Like to the outside it's juicy. End. Yes. Ooh. I think that's done. I think we can take this off. I'm just going to ah, take this off in the foil. Oh, so hot. And wrap it up. That's perfect. Nice and soft. Wrap that up nicely. Let's and we'll go and, bung we'll this go in the and pop it in the freezer. You can actually leave the beef in the fridge overnight for the flavours to really penetrate. So this is what I reckon carpaccio ought to be, and this is how I think it ought to be eaten. It looks delicious. Hot climates, and I think this is mm. pretty appropriate to here. Bit of parmesan we shoved on top. Yeah, well, it I just mean, goes a bit more olive oil, placed. maybe a squeeze of lime, mm. a few salad leaves, more pepper, as if it didn't need more already. <laughs> <laughs> Should we give it a go? Let's give it a go. Okay, I'm going to just pick it up. And this is the sort of food we just use our fingers. I think so. It's yeah. a finger food, isn't there it? There we go. You're going to shove that whole thing oh, in, are you, Mike? Like, I'm good. I thought I might just put a little bit in. Mm. I'm just greedy. Mm, that is so good. Mm. Very, very tender. Your beef. Isn't is that good? The that's, business. that's simmental. Simmental? Mm -hmm. I've eaten that in Switzerland. Well, now you've eaten it in Kenya. In part two, I visit the community lodge of Tassia, where I make a hot salsa to go with the Maasai's Nyama Choma, or roast lamb. Albert Bartlett Rooster Potatoes, sponsor of the Flavor Zone. Coriander, check. Ginger, garlic, chilies, check. They think poker night's getting a bit stale. I'll put a rocket up the residence group. <laughs> we all think food is important, but for TV chef Mike Robinson, his life depends on it. I've spent a total of nearly 600 grand. Will Mike build his gastro pub in time? I've got basically three weeks. Uh. Hungry for a great story? It's going to be perfect. Heaven's Kitchen, weeknights at 9, new to UK TV food. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, except for a herd of goats, several chickens, and a porky pig. Because that's why I'm giving my lot as prezzies. Last year, those <laughs> scented drawer liners I gave my mother went down like a lead balloon. But this year, she's getting goats to give to a poor family in Bangladesh. And here uh, uh, is the gift card to tell her. And the porky pig. And the chickens for a family in Honduras. Hello, Santa. Guess who rules the roost around here? For as little as a fiver, I get to give something really amazing to everyone out of this. This is World Vision's alternative gift catalog. <laughs> Thanks, son. Love the goats. For your free gift catalogue, go online or call 0800 50 10 10. If you think you were missold your endowment policy, then call Claim for Endowment now because you could be entitled to compensation. Thousands of homeowners are finding their endowment mortgage doesn't cover the original loan amount. 
So if you're facing a shortfall, speak to us, because we could win you compensation if your own endowment policy was missold. We're experts at winning endowment claims for people like Mr. and Mrs. Vince. With our help, they won over £6,700 compensation. Mr. Draper Harding was missold his endowment, and now we've helped him win over £4,000 back. And Mr. and Mrs. Bartlett, they won over £7,200 compensation, money which has really helped them. Claim for Endowment is a free helpline, and the good news is our Endowment Claim Service is on a no-win, no-fee basis. Remember, there may be a time limit on making your claim, so call now or apply online because we can help you win compensation. Call 0800 881 8372 for free advice about making your Endowment Mortgage Claim. Call now. Not looking good, is it? I don't know. We've got more going out than we've got coming in. Stop. Don't panic. One simple call to Debt Buster Loans could sort out all your financial problems and cut your monthly bills in half. Yes, half. They could take all your debts, credit cards, loans, overdrafts, everything, and give you back a Debt Buster Loan for up to £75,000. It's quick, easy, and you can do it all over the phone or online, whichever you prefer. They don't want your life history, what you do for a living, employed, self-employed, retired. They don't even mind if you have a poor credit rating. All they ask is that you can afford the repayments. It really is as simple as that. So to see how you can cut your monthly bills in half and keep more money in your pocket, ring Debt Buster Loans now on 0800 032 4646 or apply online. Debt Buster Loans. They can turn your life around. Natural, pure, and heavenly. I'm going to be showing you how to create an organic garden from scratch right here at the Pot Kiln Pub. Even if you've never grown anything before, this is the show for you. Look at that, that's Look fantastic. The so you don't want that? Right, OK. That is superb. She's dead right. Heaven's Garden. Weeknights at 10, only on UK TV Style Gardens. Albert Bartlett Rooster Potatoes, sponsor of the Flavor Zone. My hosts, Mike and Nikki Dyer, have flown me over to visit a neighboring community project at Tassia. Built entirely by the local Maasai tribe from local materials and run by them, this luxurious lodge is quite stunning with spectacular views towards the northern frontier and a pool to die for. The staff have laid on a warm welcome for my visit, a bit warmer than I'd bargain for in that heat, and I'm taken straight over to where they're cooking up a whole lamb in my honour. This is a great opportunity for me to see how the Maasai prepare and cook their meat, which is their staple diet. They cook the lamb in different stages. Here they're preparing the shoulder meat to stew it. They're carefully trimming off the fat from the meat and cutting it up with a simi, the Maasai sword. They then cover the meat with water and stew it. I can't wait to try this. This is really new. This is something I've never tried before. Yeah. So now what's we happening? We call it uh, monono in Maasai. Monono? They wait until the water is gone, completely And finished. it's all gone, I can see it's just and fat. Usually, now it's fat coming up. Yeah. So what they're doing, they're just waiting until the fat is coming, about one glass of it. That's incredible. So this is a thorn. So directly what we'll be doing. Yeah, it's, it's, I take a piece, lots of sauces. It, it looks beautiful, it looks like a real sort of yeah, bridge. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Oh, good. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Mm. That tastes absolutely fantastic. Just really delicious. Only four ingredients. Stunning. Well done, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're cooking up the next stage of the meal, the spare ribs of the lamb, which are being barbecued over an open fire. Very simple cooking this, not interfering with the flavour in any way. Really 
The Maasai are explaining to me that for them, this is the sweetest part of the lamb, and they eat this part first as an appetizer. There's quite a ritual to the way the Maasai eat, and they're superstitious about the number of ribs they eat. Uneven numbers are unlucky. Maybe it's to avoid fighting over the leftovers. I wasn't sure. Anyway, we're all gathered around, and the aroma is making us all hungry as wolves, even in that heat. The ribs are very much the favorite food of the Maasai warriors, and they cook the rack of lamb with great care, so the fat's cooked through and is crisp and crunchy. I'm paid the ultimate honor by being offered the first rib. Okay, this is the appetizer. Thank you. Time for the tasting. That smells gorgeous. Mm. Here we go. Mm. Mm. That's superb. It's really sort of char grilly and. Mm. I haven't eaten better lamb than this in London. This is great. <laughs> the last and most succulent part of the lamb, the legs, are now being slowly barbecued, and the Maasai are cooking this up for us to eat in the shade of the dining room in their lodge. This kitchen's got the best view <laughs> of any kitchen I've ever cooked in. And now, also best view is we've got this fantastic range of ingredients here. Now, with all this lovely mutton and lamb, I thought we need something a bit sort of, oh, a bit spicy to serve with it. So, using all these produce, all this produce, which is all made in the Barana Garden, all grown, I should say, in the Barana Garden, organically. So, what I'm going to do is take some shallots, and I'm going to make a little piri piri, or pili pili, as they say here which is a really sharp, fiery, chilli sauce, like a salsa, to go with the lamb, and it should cut any of the fat on the lamb. So we've got some nicely chopped up shallots there. We've got some garlic. I want to make this really pungent, so I'm just going to do some garlic. Nice and coarse, because I think this, this, this is nice and robust. It doesn't need to be very fine. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of garlic, but it's a strong flavour and I think it needs it. So, last two. There we go. Now, other main ingredient, chilies. I have no idea how hot these are. The way you apparently you tell how hot a chilli is, is you bite the end off. And so I'm going to shriek in a minute. Uh, hang on. Mm, it's quite hot. <laughs> Getting hotter. Oh, gee. Right, that'll do. That's fine. So, I'm going to use this one. I'm probably going to use two because I'm a sucker for punishment. And, and just going to do them nice and coarsely. I'm not going to bother about taking the seeds out either because I want it quite fiery. And woe betide anyone who bites into one of these chunks of chilli. So there we go, it's one of those. And I think generally as a rule of thumb with chilies, the smaller they are, the firier they are. So let's just get, let's be really bad and do three. There we go. It's such a pleasure, this view is absolutely amazing. There's birds, there's animals squawking out there. Right. Now I reckon also some of this celery, this is glorious celery, mm. straight out of the garden. It's really sweet, tastes like celery ought to taste. It's not remotely namby-pamby in its flavour. And I think we'll just do some quite finely shredded celery because this is going to be barely cooked, hardly cooked at all. So we'll just do some nice fine stuff. There we are, lovely. So we've got some celery, chilli, onions, garlic, or shallots I should say garlic. And I think Tomatoes, lovely homegrown tomatoes. So we'll take these in half and quarter them. And I'm going to take out the sort of soft inner bit. Because <laughs> I don't want it squelchy, I want it quite robust and firm. And here we go. That's lovely. Do four of those. I'll probably do another couple of those in a minute. So all I'm going to do to these is just finally dice them, like this. I think <laughs> that's absolutely burning up. I <laughs> shouldn't have nibbled the end of that chilli. Never mind. Things we do for our art. 
gorgeous. So that's, I think, the base sort of ingredients for our salsa. I might add another tomato or two in a minute. So while you've been taking in the view, having a nice little look at the surroundings, <clears throat> I've just been cheerfully munching on one of these lovely little organic carrots and chopping up some more tomatoes. I think we're pretty much ready. We're going to take this over and just give it a little saute. I only want this to just warm through. I want to soften these, soften the celery, get those vast amounts of chili cooking in, get the flavours in. Right, over to the stove. So, first of all, let's get this pan on. It's going to get some oil in here. This is just plain vegetable oil. I don't think you want to use olive oil, anything like this, for a salsa like this, because it's just too strong a flavour. So in go our ingredients. Yeah. Boom. Stop it. Excellent. Now. Boom. Let's just strip this off. Wow, the chilli. Oh, smell of cooking chilies. It's gone straight up my nose and into my eyes. Just going to sprinkle the herb on. Just going to give this a shush for a minute. Tell you what would be great is if I could, someone could pass me the um, salt and pepper. That would be lovely. Wow. Thank you very much. We'll season it. Oh, those chilies. Wonderful. There we go. And I think this just needs a little sharp kick. So hiding in my pocket, I have a lime. I have a knife. I'm just going to cut a lime and squeeze it all in here to make this salsa. There you go. Just soften those <laughs> for a minute. Absolutely wonderful. And that's great, but quite strong. That's all it needs. Aye, 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 aye. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to just put a tiniest drop of water in, soften it up. And I've got a little receptacle here, one of these beautiful hand towels. Doodles, a bowl. In goes our salsa. There we go. I reckon that spoon over our lamb. It's really fiery. Let's try it actually. What the hell? Mm. <laughs> it's gonna work. Okay, who's gonna try? Yeah? Yeah? Are you up for it? Yeah, okay, come on guys, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Hot, <laughs> 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 there we go. Right, it's carve up time. I'm going to carve this beautiful char-grilled, seared, Maasai shoulder of lamb. Very fresh, today's meat. And I reckon this is just, there's quite a lot of fat on the outside. Because these are nice, plump, healthy lambs. Look at this. Oh, beautifully cooked. There we go. We've also got to go with this, of course, seared lamb with just simple, with spices, oil. It's absolutely stunning. Just the salt brings out the flavor of the meat. This lovely sort of char-grilled fat works really, really well, and this rather fiery little piri-piri sort of salsa to go with the lamb. There we go. Mm. <laughs> mm. Couldn't be better. Dining room with a view. Mm. My lunchtime sandwiches are looking a bit limp in comparison to all that. Luckily though, Tamazin Day-Lewis is up next here on UK TV Food with some feasts for a fiver. Maybe I'll try one of her recipes. Albert Bartlett Rooster Potatoes, sponsor of the Flavour Zone. This week, he's grilling the comedians. If you can get a word in edgeways. So, anyway, let's talk. Uh, hello, hello. Yeah. <laughs> you know what my mum said? When you're going on David Ross. <laughs> <laughs> they are gay, aren't they? Already damaged. You know, I don't mind. 
I've just got to watch you. Yeah, you're a cheeky sausage. Comedians Week on Friday night with Jonathan Ross. Tonight at 11 on UK TV Gold. With the one account, you can pay off your mortgage early and save money by combining it with your current account. I always said that one day I'd work for myself, and now I've paid off my mortgage. Here I am. You can pay more off your mortgage when you want to, and less when you need to. You can even take a payment break and do something you've always dreamed of. This is even more amazing than I ever expected it to be. It really is. You can also borrow extra money at the same rate as your mortgage as soon as you set up your account. So you could make some of those home improvements you've always talked about. I'm so pleased to get rid of that hideous bath. And it's easy to switch. We'll sort out everything for you straight away, even your direct debits and standing orders. So whether you'd like to pay off your mortgage early, take that once-in-a-lifetime trip, or even just do up the house, the One Account is the ultimate flexible mortgage and can help you make one day today. Call us now on 08456 10 20 80. Hey, it's like all your Christmases have come at once. <laughs> but luckily, we've only got the good bits. Back to back on UK TV. Tamas in Day Lewis is cooking for students now on UK TV Food, and you'll be surprised what you can make for a fiver. Albert Bartlett Rooster Potatoes, sponsor of the Flavor Zone. write cookery books but my poor daughter didn't have a hope she wrote a student cookbook for her then boyfriend to go to university because most students live on pot noodles but actually Miranda doesn't and what I've tried to teach her is how to make really good food cheap reasonable food well and so she's gone to university she's just started her first year at Bristol and she's giving a dinner party tonight for I don't know five six seven who's counting with students you never know how many are gonna turn up but it's got to be cheap so creme caramel Wonderful, cheap, easy dish any fool can make. £3.40 to make. I'm going to do the whole dinner, I hope, for five, six, seven, eight people, however many, £5 a head. First of all, get the caster sugar with vanilla pods ready in it and melt it to a burnished mahogany colour. No more, mustn't blacken or the whole dish will be bitter. Three ounces, 90 grams of sugar. The thing about the sugar is not to stir it because if you do, it'll end up sticking to the spoon and you'll never get it off. And just watch it. This is not like paint drying. You seriously can't afford to turn away because if you do, the whole lot will bubble up and you'll end up with your stove wearing it. One false move and it's blackened. And I'm going to stick the oven glove on because this is dodgy. Particularly when I put the water in, it's going to steam up. And I just got to hit the bottom of this. I need the best deal on my car insurance, but how will I decide who to call? O eight hundred double O ten sixty six. Oh, wait, hundred double O. Oh. Who's singing that? Me, Harry Hastings. Don't you know Hastings Direct were the cheapest car insurance providers for 2004? Four out of five people could save up to £226 by calling Hastings Direct. If you're looking for cheaper car insurance, make one call to Hastings Direct now. Oh, wait, hundred double O. Oh. 1066. Don't you just hate it when your CDs skip, skip, skip and jump? Dirt, surface scratches, and even fingerprints can ruin your music collection. But the Disc Clinic from JML can help bring them back to life. Just spray on the specially formulated restoration fluid and turn the handle. The ingenious triple rotary action does the rest. 
It's great for DVDs and computer discs too. The Disc Clinic from JML is only $9.99 at Woolworths, Pan Stretcher and Wilkinson Stores right now. It's like all your Christmases have come at once. <laughs> but luckily, we've only got the good bits. Back to back on UK TV. Mike Robinson is staying on the island of Lamu next on UK TV Food, where the safari chef rustles up coconut rice and flambered seafood with a niece, which is said to ward off the evil eye. For a smoother, fluffier mash, use a ricer on your roosters. A tip from Albert Bartlett, provider of rooster potatoes, sponsor of the Flavour Zone. We've come to the ultimate tropical paradise, the island of Lamu, which is just off Kenya's east coast. I make some coconut rice with a spicy Swahili prawns. I create a tamarind sauce to marinate a stuffed boned leg of lamb. Then I flambe all this wonderful seafood with some anise to create a Kenyan and French fusion dish. I'm staying in a real desert island paradise in the coastal village of Kipangani on the eastern side of Lamu, which is a real little tropical island in the Indian Ocean. There are no roads on the island and Kipangani is the place to come if you want to feel like a castaway. This is Five Star Robinson Crusoe, where the bandas or straw huts are made in the style of an African village. Some of them are built up on stilts but inside there's all the comforts of a five-star hotel. There's just no electricity, but there's plenty of peace and tranquility. Instead of game safaris, you go out on sea safaris here. And today I'm going out on a sailing trip on a traditional Arab dhow. There are coral reefs all around the beaches here, and I'm hoping for a spot of snorkeling, but we're in for rather a treat. There's some dolphins around here. I've just seen them. In fact, they're just over there, just the other side of the boat. Dolphins are incredibly friendly, and our guide Louis tells me that they love swimming with humans, so here comes one exceedingly dolphin-friendly safari chef. Eric Nielsen and I are going to show, show you how to make coconut rice yes. with Swahili prawns. Swahili prawns, big fat juicy local prawns. Coconut rice which I've been dying to see because it's not just what it sounds like, there's all sorts of little bit things in it. Yeah. It's quite sort of special. So Swahili prawns, now first thing I've got to know, what's your local name for coconut rice and Swahili prawns? Uh, coconut rice, we call it um, uh, Wali Wanazi. Waliwanazi. 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 And Swahili prawns? Swahili prawns, Maitaje. Kamba. Kamba. Kamba, Kamba Swahili. Kamba Wanazi. Kamba Wanazi. Kamba Wanazi. Yeah. Cool bananas. Kamba. Kamba. Okay. We call them Kambas. Kamba is like string. That's yeah. interesting because in various place, parts of the world they call these gambas. The French call these gambas. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, you see? <laughs> okay, nice. should we do it before I completely expire in the middays? <laughs> 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 and also in front of these three things. All oh, right. Yeah. So, a little bit of oil. Yes. There we go. A bit yeah. of butter. Yes, a bit of butter. That's no, not that hot. Okay. A bit of, oil, bit bit of onion. onion. Thank you so much. Whoa, that's hot. Yes. Gico Mark Three And the garlic. Onions and garlic are in everything, aren't they? 
bit of the ginger. A little ginger. Lovely, lovely. Give this a little shimmy. Come here for my cloth. Yes. Just a bit. <laughs> and it's quite hot. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now what? Uh, Lovely smell there. Yeah. Okay. Next thing. Next thing. Camba. We we'll have our cambas. Cambas. So yeah. you just chuck them in. You just chuck them. Go in. for them. Go for it. You chuck them in. Lovely. And straight away, I can do this without throwing them. They're going pink. Yes. And you've just deveined them, so you've taken the yeah. vein, which is like the. Uh, the guts out of them. Yes. Great, a bit of salt. Yes. Okay. Have some uh, lemon. lemon. Uh, are these lemons or limes? Lemon. Lime. Lemon. Oh, we've lemon. got a difference in opinion here. <laughs> Which one is it? It's just the same. Lemon. Lemon. Okay. Lemon, yes. <laughs> Our lemons are yellow. Yeah, but I've seen lemons here that are green. Yes, and the green also. It's very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> la la la. Yeah. There we go. Okay. All right. Yeah. So and, uh, maybe coriander. Coriander. Dania. Dania. Mm -hmm. I like dania, so I'll put a lot in. <laughs> okay. And and we have the tamarind. This is already squeezed out. This okay. is your famous tamarind tamarind sauce. Yeah. Put in a squeeze. Mm -hmm. right, yeah, let's pick and what's the makeup of this? How do you make this? These are the, the, the tamarind juice yep. with coconut. Okay. Mixed all together. It's wonderful. It's very sour yeah. and yeah. spicy yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. it reeks of the Kenyan coast. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a tamarind tree with pods on it with the lovely tamarind seeds just growing next to my little banda. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I saw them last yeah. night when I was stumbling back to my hut. <laughs> Brilliant. So that's on its way. Now I'm guessing that's tomatoes say, yes. for the colour. Yeah. So just chuck them in and go for it. Okay, I'll give this a stir because if I do that tossing thing once more, I'm going to cover myself. Okay. And uh, is there anything else to it or is that about it? That's about it. Great. It does smell great. The tamarind really makes it. So, okay, that's basically cooked because those prawns, you don't want to overcook you them, do you? Them. Yeah. Overcooking is deadly. I'm just going to wash my fingers. No, no, no. Do you know, that was cold 20 minutes ago. I'm not kidding. I could barely get in that if that was a bath. That is red hot. It's just because it's sitting here. I forgot to warn you. <laughs> it's, this is quite, and the sun is right overhead. It doesn't get any more midday than this. <laughs> okay, back on my buffalo. Right, so, yes, so. our prawns are just gonna sit there, keep warm. Now we've got to make our coconut rice. Yeah. So is that rice already cooked? The, the rice is already yeah. cooked. Okay, so it's just warming it up? Just warming yeah. it. Great, yeah. so a little bit of butter. Lovely. A few onions. A few onions. Not too many, just for a bit of flavour. Okay. Dania. They use so much down here at the coast. Yeah, yeah. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. We use it too much. <laughs> you can't, as far as I'm concerned, you can't use it too much. God. <laughs> I tell you, I'm pouring water into myself again. As fast as it's coming in, it's coming out again. It's this pathetic pale Anglo-Saxon skin. Oh, it's just ridiculous. But it's the same with me, you can see. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> Uh, okay, so look, we've got a bit of flavour there from the dania and the onion. Yes. Bit of the co is that coconut cream? Yeah, this is the coconut. Fem. Yeah, we've actually uh, just been uh, grinding it. Now I saw With this earlier. Yeah. This is what do you call this fem? Yes. Fem and sim. Yes, there's fem and sim. And the fem is the first pressing. It's like y olive oil. Yes. Yeah. Where it's nice and thick and gloopy like this. Yes. yes. And the sim is the second pressing, which is much more second class, and we won't have anything to do with that at all. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So now. Does once, that go in? Once our onions are cooked, yes. Okay, so yes. Oh, you need to just get the onions soft. Yes. Well, let's pretend they're soft. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. And this is the same as what you get in cans. So you, the coconut milk you get in cans, it's not coconut milk, it's coconut cream. Yeah. Coconut milk is the very what, liquid see-through. It's the liquid that's yes. basically the water in the middle of the coconut yes. that you can drink. Yes, you can drink. And what the, this is, 
is the, the grated pulp of the coconut, yeah. which you then pour that water and some other water onto and yeah. squeeze through a sort of wickerwork thing, yes. and you get this thick pulp. It's peachy. Wow. So, okay, onions, dania, and now coconut milk and rice. And that just soaks up. See, this does look lovely. We'll just give it a little mix. Even this, even this spoon has been sitting out and just the metal has got red hot. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for this breeze, I'd be down there and you'd be cooking, I'd There's a wonderful breeze going on. Oh, it's fantastic. OK. Right. Yes. So, Bob's your uncle. Yep. The, that looks ready. done. Yep. So how do we... Let's serve it. Yep. Let's pop it on a plate. Coconut rice is beautifully done. Remind me what that's called? Yes. How do you Wali. Wali. Wali Wanazi. This dish is very coastal. Yes. Rice, prawns, tomatoes, coriander, onions, ginger, garlic. And I guess you could add other things. You could put some of the spices in here. You could put in some uh, cinnamon and cardamom and all those sorts of things. Yes. Yes, all the coastal spices. You like, do you like using those things? I love the spices. Oh, this is amazing, <laughs> this area. I was, we were in Lamu town, just, just, just down the bay here. Yeah. And Lamu, it's just fantastic. You know, looking around, the buildings going back to the 12th century. Yes. And you can just imagine sort of 800 years ago, all the Arab markets and the, the spices coming from India and you name it. Anyway, I'm waxing on. Let's oh. look at your food. <laughs> that looks brilliant. A little bit of dania. Yeah. yeah. Little squeeze of lemon. Yes. Yeah. Wow. There's enough there. Yeah. There we go. Wow. And Thanks. there we are. Yeah. Coconut rice with Swahili prawns. Oh. Time for a swim. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and in the pool. <laughs> Straight for a beer. Yeah, man. Thank you. Come on, let's yeah. go to swim. <laughs> in part two, I mix up a marinade for a leg of lamb and devise a French-style seafood fricassee, which I'd flambe with anise. Albert Bartlett Rooster Potatoes, sponsor of the Flavour Zone. Coriander, check. Ginger, garlic, chilies, check. They think poker night's getting a bit stale. I'll put a rocket up the residence group. <laughs> we all think food is important, but for TV chef Mike Robinson, his life depends on it. I've spent a total of nearly 600 grand. Will Mike build his gastro pub in time? I've got basically three weeks. <laughs> Hungry for a great story? It's going to be perfect. Heaven's Kitchen, tonight at 9, new to UK TV food. Bourron, fragrance for men from Lacoste. You're manipulative, you're self-centered. He's on a dead-end course, he's gonna kill himself. I'm not gonna go to your funeral. This is a waste of a precious life. Intervention. Real-life families trying to break addiction before it breaks them. This week on the Biography Channel. The property ladder's all very well when you're on the way up. But many British homeowners have had a nasty surprise. They're the unlucky people who bought an endowment mortgage and now find their policy does not cover the original loan amount. They're facing a final shortfall with no extra money left over. But here's the good news. If you think you were missold your endowment policy, then you could be entitled to compensation. Claim to Gain offers a free helpline for all homeowners whose endowment mortgages are not on target. Claims are handled on a no-win, no-fee basis, so you've got nothing to lose. Even if you've already tried to claim compensation and failed, we could still help you. But you need to move quickly, as some companies have started closing their doors on these claims under exclusion rules. So don't leave it to chance. Log on to claimtogain.com and apply online because we could win you compensation if your endowment was missold. Or simply call 0800 1977 009 and we'll send you a free information pack. Call now. Tea with ordinary tap water or cleaner, clearer Brita filtered water. Brita's new Maxtra cartridge removes chlorine and impurities to give you great tasting hot or cold drinks. 
Call now and save £20 with this exclusive TV offer. A filter jug with six cartridges. That's 900 litres of Brita water. Looking for a new kitchen? Then look at these fantastic deals. This kitchen, including appliances, only £695. Or this kitchen, including appliances, only £995. Or this kitchen, made from real wood and solid granite, with no chipboard used, for just £1,595. Our price promise means we'll beat any like-for-like -like quote. So, for a free, no-obligation design, with no pressure sales, call us now on 0800 607 507. That's 0800 607 507. Fact. Bacteria can make even the cleanest home smell. Air fresheners often just mask smells with overpowering fragrances. Dettol Nutra Air is not an air freshener, but an air treatment that neutralizes smells, even those caused by bacteria. Dettol Nutra Air, the air treatment. And now is a plug-in for up to 80 days of freshness. Natural, pure, and heavenly. I'm going to be showing you how to create an organic garden from scratch right here at the Pot Kiln Pub. Even if you've never grown anything before, this is the show for you. Look at that, that's fantastic. So you don't want that? Right, OK. That is superb. She's dead right. Heaven's Garden, tonight at 10, only on UK TV Style Gardens. Albert Bartlett Rooster Potatoes, sponsor of the Flavour Zone. We're doing a bit of a barbecue later for our guests, playing by the pool as we speak. And um, very unusual. This is uh, Eric's sort of lamb masterpiece. And Eric, you've got a couple of legs of lamb, which I'm just going to bring over and show you. Here we go, look, have a look. Now, you've boned these. Yes. What else have you done? I've just marinated with um, garlic. With garlic? Yes. And it looks like, looks to me, Eric, like there's a bit of chilli or something in there. Yes, as usual. <laughs> yeah. Can't get that one past me. Okay. okay, so they're just marinating. So if we put them down, that's just the start of the marinade. It's simple but amazing. Now, there's a tamarind tree growing up there, and this is what tamarinds are, look. These are, this, they, they come in a sort of brown husk. You take it off and you get this sticky, gluey, sort of gloopy, really weird, sour, limey, shrimpy smelling thing. And all you do is you whack it in here, which is just water, hot water, and you instantly get this ultra thick, gloopy gravy look. And what, they come off their stalks straight away, they fall off, and then we just discharge these, biodegradable, into the ocean. Here comes another one. So now we've got our stalks out, the last one. And literally all you do with these is you just take them and you just go plop and in they go. Boiling water, very easy. And you can get these in Britain at sort of oriental supermarkets and whatnot. Now that's been glooping away there and that's thickening up nicely. We've got a bit of oil in there. Yes. So all we want to do is brown these lamb legs off. Yeah. So do you want to sling me a leg? Yep. <laughs> oh, great. Let me just pile in there. Lovely. So we've got about a dozen people we're going to cook a barbie for tonight. We have heat. Yes. Sizzle, sizzle. Well, sizzlish, sizzlish. There we go. Now, those are going to sit on there. Just to get a little bit of colour, I'm just going to rinse my hands off. My little bowl here with the lime in it. Ah, that's sizzling away nice. It's lovely lamb, this very dark colour. Sizzling away, a little bit of colour. Well, not really. Let's pretend that's nicely browned. Yes. OK? Yes. Imagine golden brown sizzling, you know what I mean, dry pan, really hot. To marinate it, what we do is just pour some of this over. Yes. OK. And I'm just going to try and stop the seeds coming out as best I can, but I'll fail. And look at that. That's not, there's no additives. It's just tamarind and water. Really thick and gorgeous. That's that good enough for you? Man, that looks good. Mm -hmm. Now, that is just going to sizzle away there or bake away or whatever, because we're not trying to cook it here. We're just trying to impart a bit of flavour. That can sit in that pan till we're ready to barbecue. It's going to go straight on the hot coals, cook for maybe 20 minutes each side, an hour in total. While that's cooking, Eric and I are going to do a couple of other dishes on the barbie once the sun's gone down. Bit of flaming, bit of this, bit of that. Hopefully, everyone will be happy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey.
It's nearly sunset and the perfect time to go out for a Kipangani style sundowner with my hosts Mary Jo and Louis. They know this stretch of water well and they're telling me all about the coastline in this very remote part of Kenya. Literally, if Louis took you in a boat, speedboat along that channel, you'd be... In lion country? Yeah. Well, I never. I bet that conflicts with the uh, farming over there. <laughs> in the worst possible way. Now, sundowners at Kipangani are very, very civilised. It's just gone below the horizon. I've been for a little drive on the Dow, the local Dow. Had a drink, got a nice drink, looking at the food that Eric, the master chef here, has produced for me. It's beautiful. Look at this. We've got some lovely chicken wings with some a nice sort of piquant dipping sauce with chilli and tamarind and soy sauce. Little prawns there to dip and homemade samosas with fish and prawn and little bits of chicken and vegetables. It's fantastic. It's barbecue time down by the pool and Eric and I have been working on some exotic ways to cook all this fantastic seafood for our guests. What I'm gonna do is just stick a bit of butter in here. It's hot, hot pan. Butter's been beautifully clarified. Into this is gonna go all that lovely garlic and some very finely shredded onion. Now, you could use shallot as well, very happily with this. And this is very, it's actually a little bit sort of southern French, Marseille, but you know, down in the south of France, there's a lot of North African influence, so there's a tiny hint of a connection here. However, there are all the ingredients, all the ingredients for this, with the exception of two, are local. So, sweat that off, get that smell. Yeah. Mmm, nice butter, one. garlic, and onions. Yeah. It's just what I'm used to. Yeah, I know. So far, mate. So yeah. far, just yeah. you wait. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to get that going now. I don't want it to colour, so that's cool. Now, a little bit more butter, because it's a very rich, rich, rich dish, this. There we go. Yes. That's the base ingredient. It's very, very simple, just nice flavours. Into this, look at this plate of fabulous seafood. We're just going to put some prawns. I'm actually deliberately keeping these a little separate. I'm going to put some things on one side, some things on the other. There you go, my prawns. This is my lobster going in along this side here. And the action of putting the cold seafood onto a hot pan, because these jikos, these charcoal burners, are seriously hot. That action of putting those in will slow the cooking down and hopefully not let the garlic and onions burn. The fish is going in there. There we go. Like that. And some calamari in the middle. Just some nice fresh squid. And the squid is everywhere here. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Squid's so common on the coast here. In fact, I saw some the other day that were brought in on a net, all flashing and livid and iridescent colours, and they're fantastic. Yes. And you know the thing about squid here, I've discovered, because I'm just going to waffle on for a bit here and let that sizzle for a moment. The thing about squid here is, because it's so fresh, it never gets tough. It's so tender and juicy. You can cook it for three or four minutes even, it doesn't get tough. So we're just starting that and going, just pushing that around like that. Just want to get that going, I'm going to season it a little. Some nice salt, some nice pepper. Very simple ingredients. Okay, let's just, I just want to turn these. Right, let's turn it over. Now, I'm just going to take a minute turning this. If you're very sort of romantic, you can hear the surf swishing just behind me. Really it's good. Like that. That's <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. It's a good dish, this. The flavours are really interesting. All I wanted to do was get it so that they were cooked on one side, yes. now they've turned over, because the last thing, I mean, you know this better than me, the last thing you want to do with beautiful fresh ingredients like lobster, prawns, calamari, fish, all these things is overcook it. It's an absolute travesty. Here I have a bottle of well-known aniseed liqueur. In France, I just call this pastis. Okay, so you can guess. Aniseed, I'm going to pour it over. It's a rather nasty green color. Warm it through for a moment. There we go. Give it a little shimmy. There we go, look. <laughs> la, 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 la. Ah. Smell, the, smell the garlic, the aniseed, the onion. A little white, um, actually quite a lot of white wine. Because the white wine is sort of the base for our sauce. Here we are. And we're going to simmer this in white wine. So that's going to take a minute to come up to heat. 
Right, now that's just sizzled away. We've got some beers coming. Now, what I'm going to do if I don't drop everything is I'm just going to lift out my prawns. Everything, actually. I'm going to lift all the sort of firm ingredients out of this. Like this. Like that. So that's two ingredients. The others can go on your little platter there. The lobster's done. The rest is only going to take just a moment to finish off. Because this is our sauce, basically. The beautiful thing about, about this is that now I'm going to add a little bit of crab, OK, in here. Because the crab's so delicate, you know, you can't cook it like you can the other things. It's the overriding flavour. I'm going to add some of this beautiful basil. Yeah. OK, crab and basil. Stirry, 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 stirry. Happy, happy. Oh, <laughs> this is Beaumagnier. Eric made this for me a little while ago. And all this is, is Beaumagnier means softened butter, hand, hand butter, Beaumagnier, butter that's been worked with a hand. And you just stir it in here a little bit. I don't want it to be thick and gloopy. I just want it to have a little bit of consistency. That's actually plenty for this dish. And as I stir it in, it has the advantage over corn flour that it doesn't actually make the sauce all sort of... Uh, it, it, keeps it keeps it glistening, it keeps it lovely and shiny, but it will thicken, and it's thickening already. Look at that, you can see oh, when yes, I pull it aside, uh, it's yes. thickening the yeah. dish. There we go. It's a little bit, got a little bit of a lovely buttery, greeny tinge. That's oh, pretty yes. much it. A couple of squeezes of lemon in here. There we are, look how thick that's got. Stunning. Cheers. Okay, Cheers, that's boss. done. Rock and roll, let's finish it off. I've got a plate. Here's the fish, the snapper piled up on one side. It's really a platter for about six people, this. Plateau de fruits de mer, as they'd say. Yeah. Look at those fat lobster tails. Oh. It's a terribly decadent dish, this, but the, the flavours, the aniseed, the basil. There's our calamari. Last bit there. Oh. Look how thick that the sauce is with the crab. Mm. My crab, butter and basil sauce over the top. Mm. There we are. And a little bit of fresh crab on top, mm. just to give it a final sort of je ne sais quoi. There we are. We've been debating for hours what to call this dish, because, oh. you know, it's got a little bit of France, a little bit of Kenya, okay. so we think we're going to call it... <laughs> what are we going to call it? We're going to call it something like number two, chef's Kipangani chef special, 24 hours notice to require to make it <laughs> meal for two people. <laughs> wow! <laughs> hey, Nielsen. <laughs> hey, voila. <laughs> Author, journalist and cook Tamazin Day-Lewis is having a house party next here on UK TV Food. So a trip to the local farmer's market to buy in some organic produce is top of the agenda. That's in a tick.